Danny the Miracle Man Jacobs announces his first fight with Matchroom Boxing. It's against Luis Arias, and it'll be broadcast live on HBO. It's Saturday, November 11th at NASA Coliseum. In my opinion, yeah. there's no one man. Gosh, bro, you ain't gonna get me <laughs> tongue tied right Ray now. No, I, I have no idea. Yeah. Danny, well, Womanchenko and Faulkner both leaving the HBO family. Uh -huh. uh, do you feel any more pressure, would you say? Uh, I won't say pressure. I mean, if anything, it's more so I got in at the right time because now they're looking to really promote a guy. Um, being that the roster is really not as full as it used to be and they can kind of focus on certain guys or the guys that they see can be a star. You know, they said I have all the ingredients to be a superstar and I'm looking forward to see what could come of that. I know you said you're taking this, uh, this fight seriously, obviously, yeah. but you also have plans beyond Arius. I mean, how hard is it to look beyond that? I mean, it's always hard. It's all, I mean, unconsciously, we're always going to prepare for the future, even though we have stuff set up. I'm prepared for this guy in the sense that I'm going to give it my all inside training. I'm going to make sure that I do the things that I got to do in order to get the victory. But it's it's almost impossible not to think about the future, right? So I do think about it, and you know, I have I have high hopes of the future and what's all to come. Because if I do what I have to do against the Arias, I know it's going to be that much easier uh, to get those fights. Danny, real quick. Uh Chris Algieri, man, back in your camp. Yeah. Is this guy, like, going to be going forward with you? Because I saw you guys had that little bromance on, like, the 24-7. No, no, you guys no. are, like, best friends, man. No, so this, is like... my, this is my guy. I mean, we formed the relationship. And the relationship wasn't really formed at the Triple G Golovkin uh, fight. It was more so over the years. Yeah. But we just really connected through that time. And now that I know he knows his stuff, and now that I know he's a big asset to the team, I'm never gonna let this guy go. He's gonna he's gonna have to have a fight lined up. He's gonna have to like do a lot for me How not to. The food? the food is amazing, but most importantly, it's nutritionist. And you know, it, our bodies are just like cars. We need the right fuel and gas to keep us going the right way. But Danny, a lot of people say you weighed like 220 pounds at the Triple D fight. <laughs> Burr, you know, no, no. I think no, no. a lot of people just want to believe something. Other than it was my skills, yep. it was my will, my determination, and my ability to neutralize him to a jab that was able to do it, not the weight. Because if anything, the weight hurts me more. Mm. Putting on more weight makes me more slower. I was the faster man that night. And just because I might look big, I look bigger than Triple G at the, at the weigh-in. But we knew this going into the fight. And never once did anyone highlight... Uh, Triple G sparring heavyweights in the past, Triple G, you know, stopping guys that are light heavyweights. None of that was mentioned because now he's faced with a guy who they think is this and now it's a problem. But they was just bragging about it, you know, a couple fights before. So my weight is no issue. It's never been an issue. I'm just a true middleweight. And, I, and I've seen you between fights. and I, I, Most maybe, what do you go up to? Maybe 180, 175, 180. 180 the most. Yeah, always, but always I, don't, in shape. I don't come into a fight 180. Yeah. I, I will be sloppy. I will be slow. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't be clicking. My, 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 like, you know, a guy get in the zone and he starts to do certain special. Like, that wouldn't click. During the Triple G fight, I kind of noticed that. During maybe the fifth, sixth round, you started touching him. You started getting that confidence up. And then around the bell rang, you were, you were getting yourself up. And did you feel yourself getting more confident as that fight went on? And if you were to fight him again, is that confidence going to carry over? Well, see, it was an illusion. I thought this guy was one of the baddest men out right. there, and I was expecting that. But when I was able to neutralize a lot of things, obviously my confidence was building. I won the first, in my opinion, I won the first three rounds until I got knocked down uh, officially. And your legs in the got caught or something, right? Yeah, it was a slip. I mean, I, but you can't say it right. wasn't yeah, a knockdown, yeah. right? Even though I didn't get hurt, right. and everyone knows that. Yeah. Um, but going on into the fight, I was expecting them to come on strong on the seventh and eighth round because in the press conference, uh, this guy said that they were going to stop me in the seventh and eighth. So, you know, I'm taking my time. Uh, all right, my brother. God bless. I'll see you soon. All right, brother. So, taking my time, really waiting for this guy to show me something in the seventh and eighth round because what he's showing me isn't what I'm used to seeing. Mm -hmm. So, in the next fight, I, if it was to happen, I definitely think I'll start, you know, being a lot more aggressive faster. And plus, you never know what these judges are judging anyway, so aggression is always the key. What do you think about the GGG Canelo fight? 
Oh, um, that decision. yeah, the decision was lopsided and it was unfair. I don't think it was a draw, but you know, that's just my opinion. Yeah. I, that's what I've said. I mean, I think if, if you consider that a draw, then... Yeah. How did you deal with that uh, loss, loss afterwards? I just think that boxing is sometimes full of politics, and you know, you never really know until you're in the middle of it. You know, I was affected by it, but I'm a man. I have to get over it, and I have to continue to do what I have to do because when you cry about spilled milk, you know, no things, nothing good can happen from it. All you have to do, pick up where you started, do what you got to do inside that ring, and it'll come back if it if it was meant to be. And talking about good, a lot has happened now with Eddie Hearn. Now, now this is. Very. I mean, it's an international sport, but right. but now you have a man that has connections very much right. over and in, into the Europe area. So how did how did that all come about? Because it seems that everything's sort of been fast. A lot of things have moved very quickly. I think uh, it's just everything just made sense. I've been a big fan of Eddie for a long time, and seeing how he uh, moved Anthony Joshua in his career. Uh, I was impressed and I uh, had an opportunity to talk to him and HBO showed a lot of interest and it just made perfect sense to combine everybody. Well, speaking about promotional contracts, a lot of times managers will sway fighters away from signing them because over the course of those contracts, promoters are getting a big cut and they're taking a lot out of your pocket and it's not it's to the detriment of a fighter. Right. So I would assume in this case, you got a very generous contract. You get something that you deserve from your promoter, not something that you got to worry about in three, four fights. He's taking 40, 50% out of your paycheck. Well, I know, I know the boxing side is full of politics. And like I've said, it's been run by the mafia back in the day. So a lot of people are concerned about the business aspects of it and how does it go and you know what are the details of it. But without giving too much detail, I can say that I am very content and happy. And this gives me security and comfort to know that I'm not being taken advantage of. You know, no fighter should go inside the ring and fight his heart out and, you know, not make as much as he can make. This is our living. So I just want to let everyone know I'm okay. I'm doing great. This deal is perfect. I, without getting into details because, you know, I don't ask... You know, people, how much money you yeah. making? I don't. You know what I'm saying? Like, right? <laughs> but I no, 100. percent This is a game changer. And for young fighters that come up, is that why it's beneficial to have a strong management team and an advisor to kind of go over these kind of things to make sure that you know what you need. Here? You need someone that cares about you, that's knowledgeable of business, and that's what I had in my best friend Keith Connolly. He, I met him when I was 15 years old, and we was cool ever since. And he wa if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have this opportunity. So he is the reason, because he protects me, like he said on the podium, he protects me as if I'm a child. And if fighters, sometimes we come from, you know, poor backgrounds. Education is not at an all-time high, right? But we're talented and we're good. And we don't have the best opportunities because we don't know better. But you have to get a guy that you can trust you have to get a guy, or a person rather, that can take care of you and give you the right advice and make sure that you know, no one's taking advantage of you. I'm Crystal Hart. Hope you've enjoyed the show. Thanks for watching and we'll see you at the fight.